The Wood Shop is sponsored by Chefware Kits with hundreds of items for wood turners. All right, welcome back. This is a follow-up video for the walking stick, and I had a couple questions about the little coupler here. So I just put a tent on a, on each end and then made the ring, but it needs to be glued together. It's not strong enough. It the, fits pretty tight, but you can hear that? Just like the lid on a box, but it's not strong enough on its own to uh, to be used unless it's unless it's glued together. So a couple a couple of things with it. Um, it, it was pretty easy to turn and I, the pine it actually you know it there's a lot of tear outs but it sands out really really easily so I just wouldn't make these very small if you're you know if it's something you're going to use I would leave these pretty beefy and then after you get up here above the handle you can do whatever you want and, and make them as small as small as you want but I'll also show you real quick um, I just kind of wanted to show you a little off center turning because I think Basically, we all do off-center turning just about any time we put anything on the lathe, just to true it up. But um, it, it's really not as not as hard as it looks. I know it it might look difficult, but unless you're doing you know some really thin joints like this, these things were actually pretty easy to turn. All right, so the piece I have on here is poplar, and I just set my tool rest up at a, at a bit of an angle here, and turn the lay speed up and I ran the walking stick at about um, about 700 I think is what I was doing those at so crank it up a little bit so normally you know if you were doing a bowl or something you just use a bowl gouge to to uh, true it up but you just come in here just gonna come in in an angle and I'm using a spindle gouge And I'm not sure what, how this is going to show up on the, the frame rate of the camera, but you can see right there that's that's your ghosting. So you can you can tell right when you're coming into it. You can see it on the bottom there too. So you know right when you're about to touch. And you can see, let me come in from the other side, but it actually makes a pretty clean cut. The poplar is actually a lot better than the pine, but they didn't have poplar dowels anymore at the hardware store. So, but it makes a pretty clean cut, and I'll come in from the other side here real quick. So you can see there's that's actually a lot better than the pine when I did. So what what you want to do, depending on what kind of effect you want, I wanted it to go all the way through. So you keep going in until it touches on the back side too, so that 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 is uh, round on the other side. So something like this is pretty easy. Where it gets a little bit tricky is where you want to do um, a fine one. You want to let's say you want a small one in there. That's where it gets a little bit tricky because you're cutting into the other side. And you want to be careful. So just roll your tool over. When you get down into the middle, you don't want to hit your wing over here on, on this side. And you don't want to have it 
catch your room back up. And there we cut through the other side on that one. So these tighter ones are a little more difficult, but if this is probably, I don't know, maybe the fourth or fifth thing I've ever turned off center, but I would definitely start with a soft wood like this. Actually, the poplar is probably, probably the best wood to do it with. I tried to do, I got some hard wood I, when I was doing that uh, um, cake stand for that friend of mine, Liz. I tried with some really hard wood and it was, I ended up uh, scrapping it and using a piece of walnut because I couldn't, just couldn't get it to cut right. So I would definitely go with, with the poplar if you're just starting out with this and practice with that. All right, and somebody wanted to see the steady rest. All right, I had a couple of questions about the steady rest I used on the vase too and, and why it was open on one side. So, to adjust it, you just uh, loosen up the bolts here. You can move it wherever you want, up and down, and it's just just simple like that. And I don't have my wrench, but okay. And and then it just mounts right to your bed, right in the right in the center there. And the reason it's open on one side is because you need to be able to get uh, the tool, the spring part of the tool. So right here, when you have it on the on the tool rest, it, this comes out. So you want that to be able, I think on the smaller tools, it might fit inside a, a round steady rest, but the largest tool he has, it sticks out too far. So it has to be open on one side, but works great. It's super beefy. Um, I'll put a link for, to Paul's website down in the description too. Okay, I wanted to show you a couple of pictures off the website. Um, I wanted to show you, uh, um, Sam and Jeff, they did some off-center boxes, and Sam said that he got the idea, he watched Robbie's video and did that, so they're just beautiful. This one's Sam's, and just great, great job, and this one is Jeff's. Alright, so, and I also want to show you Jay, this was his first turning, and he said uh, that he's going to take up wood turning, and he had a ball doing it, and he turned this uh, candle little candle holder so I think a tea light fits in the top of it so nice job Jeff that's great all right and this week I want to give a shout out to Sterling Davis um, just a great guy great member of the woodworking community here um, he does a lot of scroll saw work just some beautiful things so go check out his channel I will put a link here to that all right I couldn't find a good riddle this week but something on the wall behind me is missing that was there in the beginning of the video so the first one in the comments that can tell me what it is I will send you the code for the Chefware kit for a $10 coupon. And I wanted to show you this too. It's a pen I made out of Mount St. Helens ash from 1980. I have a jar of it and I just mixed up some epoxy and I poured it into a round tube so there isn't much waste on it. And I just used a skew chisel, I put it on side and turned it. And it wasn't wasn't hard on the tools. It you know it probably needs to be sharpened, but it wasn't too bad. So I'll put some pictures of this up at the end. All right, and John Peters has sent me a box of cutoffs from projects he's doing. So I'm, if anybody has any suggestions, I think I'm gonna maybe do a segmented box or something out of it, just odds and ends. There's plenty of stuff in there for doing uh, pins. But I wanted to thank everybody too for the ice bucket challenge. It really, uh, I know it's just goofy, but it really brings awareness to just a horrible disease, and I wanted to thank everybody who participated in that. All right, take care, and I will see you on Friday.